Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. This is the new workout program for, you know, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm kidding. But seriously, got a concern for you. If you're doing the quick carb system, like I prefer to do, you know, you're shaking the living hell out of this, there's some concerns. Don't forget to like, subscribe, keep sharing. If you learned something out of this, definitely hit the like, I definitely appreciate it. So there's all kinds of ways of quick carbonating. If you haven't seen my quick carb video, you can check it out up here. I know everybody's gonna have their own way or what they prefer and what they don't prefer. Honestly, the Blickman or any do-it-yourself version like I have of the Blickman's quick carb is probably one of the fastest ways to carbonate your beer once you put it in your keg. If you're kegging, of course, this is all about kegging. But I hate cleaning. <laughs> And with home brewing, you clean so much. So if there's something I don't have to clean by not using that method, then I'm not gonna use that method unless it's really critical. So this video, bottom line, if you're not doing any kind of, you know, quick carving where you shake it and you shake it like this and move it around, y'all can just stop watching right now, go on to other things. It's all good. Go check out that quick carb video I mentioned. But for some of us, who like to quick carve in this method, which is my preferred way of quick carving, I will put my wort in my keg. I will then put it under 30 PSI and I will shake the hell out of it the night before. Next morning, I'll make sure it's under 30 PSI. I will shake the hell out of it again. And then later that day, when I get home from work, I'll put it under 30 PSI again, shake the hell out of it. Usually drop it in my actual kegerator so, or teaser, so it'll start cooling down. Next morning, it's ready to go. So, here's the concerns. And if you roll it, and that's all you do, and roll it and roll it, you might not have this problem. Well, you will, you have one of the two problems. So, first of all, if you have any kind of floating dip tube, this is where the problem comes in, or part of the problem, there's two problems. So, it doesn't matter what kind of floating dip tube you have. I was doing this quick carb. I know I put it on there really nice. It was tight, it was snug, shaking the hell out of it, shaking the hell out of it. And this has all been going on for God, probably over a year now where I've learned these little issues and floating dip tube just somehow fell off. And luckily it's a floating dip tube and it was floating and I saw it and I was able to take care of it. And actually the one I had gotten from Trong on eBay had the little hook. So I was able to hook the tube and fix it and soak my hands in star sand. So it was all good. But if you have the regular dip tube, you don't have a problem. At least you don't have one of two problems. So one less issue. My workaround for this is if you have a floating dip tube is to simply do like I just said, shake the hell out of it, have it ready, but don't put your floating dip tube in it. And here's issue number two. I have put my gelatin in there and found that the gelatin did almost no good. Almost four days later, it still really wasn't that clear. I then dropped some gelatin in it after it had been shaken and carbonated. And guess what? The next morning, it was super clear. I mean, I was like, wow, that was fast. Awesome. I'm not sure what happens, maybe gelatin. I'll have to research a little bit more, but from what some people are saying is that it goes through, it does its job and it sticks. So if you're shaking the hell out of it, it's already stuck around the edges and it's not doing anything anymore. And all you're doing is disturbing the piece and making it not clear anymore if you want it clear beer. And this is only if you wanted it to be clear, of course. If you're doing your New England hazy, leave the gelatin out. So what do I do to get around these issues? Very simple. This being two to five gallons, I will say if you put five gallons in here, you're talking about 54 pounds. And you know, unless you're really into a big workout, I put it up here on the back of my shoulder so I can hold it. And I do like this. And I only do it maybe six times, maybe seven tops. He's I get carried away and do a little bit more. And then I take it and I set it down. And like I said, later that night or the next morning, I do it again. And I just know that I'm helping you get that CO2 really into suspension. Once I get it in the kegerator and it's cold and chilled, I know I have people going, oh, you didn't do that. It's all fine. I will purge it and purge it. And if it is an IPA, I am trying to find a way to dose it as cleanly and as easily as possible without adding 
CO2, with the exception, I guess I could stick it in another keg and run it from one keg into another, but eh, it's a little complex and I don't think I like that ideal. But once that's done, I pull it off. <laughs> the ring fell in, it's all good. Then I will take the dip tube, super clean, sitting on a plate from Star Sand. Make sure my hands have been cleaned massively with Star Sand. I will lower this in, reach in, hook the tube on there, make sure it's nice and secure. Then I will take my quarter to third cup of gelatin that's already dissolved and we'll pour that in. I'll put the lid back on. Don't forget the O-ring out. And once I put the lid back on, I'll hit it with some more CO2 and then I'll purge it a little bit just to get any O2 that could have gotten in out and put it back under pressure, leave it overnight. And the next morning or by next afternoon, it is either relatively clear or it is crystal clear. And my floating dip tubes in there, I'm good. I'm not pulling from the bottom. I've got clear beer, it's rocking and rolling and I'm serving. So that usually takes me about a little over two days, two and a half tops. If you're just doing the regular, stick it in there, let it go for two weeks, you're fine too. But I just want to make sure that anybody who's doing that quick carb shake thing like I do. Um, and like I said, if you rotate it, you're probably not gonna have a problem except for the gelatin issue. Just be aware of those two issues. One, you could have a floating dip tube come loose because it's been yanked and jerked around so much with all the liquid and pulled off and be floating on its own. And you're sitting there going, where's my beer? And then the other issue is the gelatin. I mean, I put gelatin in four kegs, did the shake method and none of them were clear. And I'm like, that's not right. Put a little bit more in there after it was cold crashed and all good to go and I wasn't shaking it anymore. And like I said, it was like instantaneous. The next day, boom, it was nice and clear. So just a few tips for anybody who's doing the shake method and trying to get a good workout at the same time. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Thanks for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing.